Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to troubleshoot a whole lot of color issues within DaVinci Resolve when we export our video edits. If we don't have the right settings set up within DaVinci Resolve, often what you'll find is when you export a video, it appears different when you're playing it on QuickTime or when you upload it to YouTube, Vimeo, Frame.io, whatever platform you use, your video may look different to the window within DaVinci Resolve that you have been watching when you've been color grading. There's nothing worse than doing an entire color grade, going to export and having issues with color shifts or gamma shifts. Before we jump in, I will say that the best practice when you're color grading is to have your signal outputted from DaVinci Resolve into a calibrated reference monitor using an output capture card. Now what this does is Resolve sends the clean feed of that video without any adjustments made by the operating system or the graphics card of the computer into a calibrated reference monitor. But if you don't have a calibrated monitor, there is a way where you can look at the DaVinci Resolve interface and the video displayed on the GUI, which is the graphical user interface of DaVinci Resolve and still have accurate colors when you are color grading. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and troubleshoot a few of these issues. So this is a brand new project that I have set up and I'm simply just going to import one clip uh, for demonstration purposes today. So this is a Blackmagic RAW clip. As you can see here, it's just a, a tutorial video that I've been recording and it is Blackmagic RAW Film Gen 5. So let's just drop that on the timeline, head over to the color page and we're going to start color grading. So if you're just starting, what you might do here is just try and um, increase the contrast, increase the saturation, maybe change the white balance a little bit. If you're happy with that, you would just go ahead and hit deliver. Let's go H.264 master. And we will go ahead and just export, add to render queue and render this off. So then once that's rendered, what you'll find is over in the finder, we can bring up this test, double click and QuickTime and play it back. And what do we have um, here? We have an image that looks completely different to what we've just been viewing in our GUI monitor here. So we go back to the color page and bring in that QuickTime preview. So you'll notice straight away that this is a lot more contrasty and saturated than this preview here. Now this is obviously really frustrating because it's quite difficult to troubleshoot if you don't know what's happening under the hood. Now the problem that we have here is that we jump straight into DaVinci Resolve without really considering any of the color management settings and without considering the pipeline of color. Color grading is what DaVinci Resolve was fundamentally built on and it is really powerful, but with power comes great responsibility and comes a whole bunch of settings that we can get wrong. So let's back it up again. What I want to do is go to DaVinci Resolve and go to the preferences and we are going to start choosing a whole lot of settings that will help with this process. The first thing under general settings is use 10 bit precision and viewer if available. We want that ticked and we want to make sure that use Mac display color profiles for viewers is ticked as well. We can tick this, but we are actually going to manage the rec 709 a tag manually. So just make sure those two boxes are checked. So next let's bring up the project settings and navigate down to the third tab under color management. We want to change the color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. I'm going to untick automatic color management and choose the custom tab down the bottom. This means I can control what the input timeline and output color spaces are. So the input color space is whatever footage you are giving it. For now, I'm going to choose Blackmagic Design Film Generation 5. The timeline color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. I will have to do future videos on all of these settings, but DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is a really beautiful timeline color space or a working color space. We are working in SDR at 100 nits and our output color space is going to be Rec 709-A. Traditionally Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 is what you would choose, but Rec 709-A is the secret source for making sure that the exports display correctly in QuickTime and YouTube. We're going to limit the output gamma to the output color space and we are going to go ahead and hit save. You'll notice straight away that the image changes because what it is doing is transforming the Blackmagic Film Gen 5 footage and it is translating it into 
a DaVinci wired gamut working space for us. And then it is also transferring that into a Rec 709 output color space. If that's confusing, don't worry too much. Basically what it's doing is the heavy lifting for us so that we can jump into the color tab and just get on with grading. Now what I'm gonna do is just give it a really quick grade. I'm gonna add some noise reduction because it is quite noisy. I'm going to add a simple ratio balance. Then I'm gonna add a white balance adjustment. I'm also going to add a parallel node here. I'm gonna add a LUT down here and I'm also gonna change this to morph into a layer mixer mode and choose the composite mode to be color. Now over in my LUTs, um, there's some really awesome LUTs from Cullen Kelly, and I'm just gonna use the winter tone LUT that he has here and drag it onto this bottom layer. But I actually really like what the colors are doing here. This is without, and this is with. Now in my ratio node, I'm just gonna use lift, gamma, and gain just to dial in the contrast that I like. And you can see it's just given a, a nice kind of filmic contrast. And then in the white balance, I'm going to really pull this down into the blues. Just bring up the vector scope to make sure the skin tones are nicely on. Increase saturation. That's what that adjustment there is doing. And then I'm also, post all of this, I'm just going to give the hue versus sat a little... Uh, lift on the blue tone so over here in my blue color i'm just going to increase that to really raise the saturation of the blue in the background back in my white balance or my balance i'm just going to drop that even further cool in my noise reduction just really quickly going to give it three frames of temporal noise reduction you can see that's before and after before, after. So here you have it. This is full screen. This is before and after that really quick color grade. I am intentionally really pushing the colors here and the saturation just so that we can see um, how accurate it is when we export. So basically what I have is DaVinci transforming, before my color grade, it's transforming the image from Blackmagic Raw Film Gen 5 and it's moving it into a DaVinci wide intermediary working space. Then you can see my color adjustments are inside the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then afterwards, what it's doing is it's taking it from that DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate space and converting it into Rec 709-A for our output. And that is what this output color space setting is here, Rec 709-A. So we've done our color grade. We've got our pipeline set up really well. Now let's head over to the Deliver tab and just have a look at a couple of settings. I'm going to choose uh, H.264 Master, save that. QuickTime H.264 is fine for this test. I'll just restrict it to 15,000 kilobytes a second. Now, color space tag. We can leave this here because we have set up the project settings here. But just to be safe, I'm going to choose Rec 709 as my color space and the gamma tag as Rec 709-A. Add to render queue, and I will just quickly render this one out. Let's head over to the finder, and let's double click on this and play this video in QuickTime. What it will do is go back to the color page. Hopefully you can see how accurate that is. The saturation is in the right place. The contrast is in the right place. The level of the black points and the highlights are all in the right place. Even all the subtle colors like the yellow in the background, these quite neon-y lights right here, the orange and the dark blue, they're all identical. So hopefully that illustrates that it is possible to actually have your QuickTime renders match the DaVinci Resolve window. There's always going to be very subtle changes between QuickTime, between YouTube, Vimeo, Frame.io. Wherever the final deliverable ends up, those platforms will influence the color ever so slightly depending on their rendering and compression processes, particularly things like noise reduction. It's just really hard to get around making those look perfect on every platform. And you will also find that when you upload these videos to Frame.io within a Safari browser and within a Chrome browser, that could look also different. 
But the point is we've got a really great starting point because we've set up our color pipeline correctly. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful and I hope that it showed you it is possible to get your DaVinci Resolve GUI monitor to match a QuickTime export and in return a YouTube or Vimeo or Frame IO upload. There's so much information out there on the internet and a lot of people giving weird advice such as exporting your video in an sRGB color space or a P3 DCI color space. For me, the best practice is simply to use the tools that DaVinci has given us and the correct color space output for the intended deliverable. So if you're delivering something to a platform such as YouTube that needs a Rec. 709 video, everything is based around the Rec. 709-A color tag and also using the color management within DaVinci Resolve is a really powerful way to make this all work. I will stress again that this method is not necessarily recommended if you are color grading full time for a living. Best practice is always to still output a clean signal from DaVinci Resolve into a reference monitor that is calibrated, but this technique using the iMac screen will get you 90% of the way there. Hopefully it'll help you with the videos that you're making for your clients or your personal content on YouTube. So we'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if it helped you out. Peace.